from Charleston, South Carolina. Please help me welcome Jasmine Adams. Smudgy's LLC. We sell these little makeup remover cloths that work completely by themselves. So where can I get one? You can go to my website, smudgy'slc.com. There's my card. Thanks, Jasmine. No problem. For now, you can just use mine. Perfect. Yeah, now you don't need any of this other stuff anymore. Wow. Amazing. See? Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go. Let's go. I'm Jasmine Adams, owner of Smudgies LLC and creator of the world's first and only everlasting eraser for all your makeup mishaps. Clearly, getting ready in the morning can be pretty hectic, especially for us girls and women who apply an average of 16 beauty products every single day. And when you're doing your makeup every day, mistakes are bound to happen. And while this picture might seem a little bit exaggerated that you see, you can ask any girl and she'll tell you that when all you want to do is get out the door on time in the morning and you have makeup all over your face, it can be the most frustrating thing in the entire world. Because all you want to do is get out the door on time and you have to figure out how to fix it. And there's a lot of options out there to fix it. Like you can keep covering it up with more makeup, you can use a facial wipe, which works great for taking off your makeup at the end of the day, but it's a waste to have to throw it away after just taking off one little smudge. You could also hunt around for some Q-tips and cleanser and try and rub it off, but usually that just turns into a mess and you're probably just gonna have to redo that whole part of your makeup. I used to do all of these things, but I also used to be a swimmer, so I had lots of old swimsuits laying around. One day it just happened to be the closest thing, so I grabbed it and tried to wipe off the extra mascara, and it came right off and it was so convenient that I kept doing it, and eventually I wanted something that I could take everywhere with me. So I created Smudgies to turn makeup into a more convenient process, not only for me, but for girls everywhere. And to also keep in mind that there are so many women out there whose daily problems are so much bigger than their makeup, I'm donating a portion of my profits to My Sister's House, which is an organization that provides shelter and support for women who have been victims of domestic violence. What actually are these everlasting erasers? Well, they're small two-sided pieces of fabric, and each side is a slightly different blend of material, which gives it a little bit of variety of texture and works better for some types of makeup than others. But both sides are fully functional and work on all types of makeup from mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow, foundation, and even lipstick. No water or cleanser is required, and they come in a variety of colors and patterns. I've surveyed some of the users of Smudgies, and they've had great responses, like, I never knew how badly I needed this until I got one. Each one sells for $7.99. The cost per unit is broken down there on the screen. Adds up to $2.87, leaving me with a profit margin of $5.13. And I have fixed expenses of $45 a month, just including my advertising and e-commerce fees for my website. So I have to sell nine units a month to break even. And the beauty industry in the United States is massive, and it's still growing. Over $55 billion in sales are generated annually, and I'm reaching out to any women and girls over the age of 10, as well as makeup artists or people in the performing arts, and I can sell to anyone in the United States because I'm selling through a website. There are over 325 million people in the United States, including over 165 million women, and it's estimated that at least 57% of women use makeup regularly, but even if I could just reach 1%, that would give me 1.65 million customers. And I'm looking for women who are appearance conscious, budget conscious, or who are just applying makeup often, whether it's for school or work or social events or a combination of all three. And I'm expecting demand to stay pretty constant throughout the year because makeup isn't really a seasonal product and I'll also be constantly introducing new colors and patterns. I'm mainly reaching my customers through social media because it's a fairly inexpensive way to reach a lot of people really quickly. And it's also very influential with younger people who are my core target demographic. And it's also a great way to get feedback from my customers through comments and reviews, and they can really let me know what they'd like to see from the company in the future. And the internet in general is just such a giant place for makeup between all the blogs and magazines and YouTube channels. So I'm reaching out to social media influencers and makeup artists to see if they could feature a smudgy in just one post or video, which would generate a lot more demand from their, from their followers. 
My competitors are any other products that women also use to fix their makeup mistakes, including these felt tip makeup remover pens, as well as facial wipes. But smudgies have clear advantages. They're so convenient because not only are they small enough to fit in your pocket, but they work 100% by themselves. Whereas these other products actually depend on the liquid makeup remover that's inside them. So if they dry out, they're completely useless. And the thing with the pens is that you actually have to clean them off with a tissue or something else every time you use them, or else they just get dirty after the first time and smear up all your makeup. And facial wipes, of course, are single use only, so after you use it once, you have to throw it away, making smudgies a much more durable and sustainable option for the environment, as well as a much less expensive option in the long run. Because you can get a $5 pack of facial wipes at Walmart, but you have to buy a new one every month versus an $8 smudgie, which can pretty much last you a lifetime. Since starting this business, I have started classes as a business major at the University of Dallas, and I've also worked with a great team, including entrepreneurship mentors, retailers who have given me advice on pricing and branding, as well as those with experience in cosmetics, such as Anna Walston, who believes that smudgies have actually filled a gap in the industry. I'm also working with the product development and manufacturing experts at Angel Factory in Graham, Texas, where smudgies are now being manufactured. I'm looking to sell 1,000 units in my first year of production with gross revenue of $7,990 and net profit of about $3,900. And I'm just looking for gradual growth as I increase advertising with a larger increase in demand and sales during the holiday season when people are out shopping and buying gifts and things of that nature. My startup costs for this were pretty reasonable at first because it was just a matter of getting the right fabric and then sewing them into squares on my sewing machine at home. But I also added the cost of a website, a retail license, filing as an LLC, getting a trademark, and a provisional patent. So my total investment came to $1,379, which means that my first year return on investment is about 283%, and my return on sales is 49%. To grow smudges for the future, I'll need to secure a full utility patent since I already have the patent pending. The full patent is definitely the next step to protect this business and the idea. I'd also love to introduce multi-packs and add customizable printing so that if a certain company or team wanted the smudges in their colors or with their logo printed on it, that would be something I could do for them. I'd also like to increase advertising to reach a much larger audience. And I think a really cool way to do that would be through a TV platform like QVC, which of course has millions of viewers. And my eventual plan for smudgies is to sell it to another cosmetics company. And that's how this everlasting eraser for all your makeup mishaps is revolutionizing the makeup industry. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Jasmine. Wonderful presentation. Judges, again, you now have six minutes for questions and answers. I'd like to hear more of your development process and how you found the fabrics that work the best. So I basically looked, did more research on the brand of swimsuit that I've been using because I was, I kind of experimented with the swimsuits for a while, and then I researched that type of fabric and ordered lots of samples of different kinds and kind of tested them out. But I've still got my inspiration from the swimsuits with the liner and then the, like the smoother outside. So. Um, I just looked at different fabric shops online and found the best kind and started sewing them together and did that for the summer and then at the beginning of fall I got them into the factory in Graham, Texas. Good job. I see that it works. I actually kissed my hand and tried it. Um, <laughs> I'm curious about your marketing plan, though, uh, for your social media influencers. Some of the toughest social media influencers to crack are in the makeup industry. How do you plan to get uh, the social media influencers in the makeup industry on board with uh, endorsing your product? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm planning to start sending samples out to them. I reached out to them on social media, but I didn't have much inventory until I got them in the factory, so I haven't had a chance to send any products to them, but I'm hoping to send out some products and hopefully get some, you know, if they use it, hopefully they'll love it enough to show it on, the, on their sites or in their videos. So that's the plan for right now. Thank you. Um, going back to the, um, the product, how defensible, assuming that one couldn't get a patent on this, how unique and defensible is this so that um, you wouldn't, we wouldn't see many competitors coming up very quickly once, once you went to market? 
Um, you mean like how how strong would the patent be to protect or, or how hard would it be for someone else to produce this, another uh, competitor? Uh, well, it would be a matter of them also finding the right fabrics, but I will need to work more with attorneys and stuff on how to get the patent to protect the idea of using this type of fabric for makeup mistakes and things of that nature. Um, so I'll need to do some more research on that, but that's what I'm looking into right now. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm interested, you know, when you you talk about, you know, this seeing washable mini uses, right? Once you have a customer, what is the lifespan that you think this lasts? And if your goal is to have repeat customers, what's going to drive them to buy more than one? Well, I've been using the fabric for a couple of years myself, and I've never had one just like fall apart or anything like that. So they are very durable, the fabric itself. And most, about half of my customers buy multiple to begin with, or they come back and buy more. And what keeps people coming back and buying more is that they often want to buy them as gifts for other people, or they just want multiple for like their one for their purse, you know, one at home, one in the car, or you know, while they wash one, they use the other one. So most of my customers do prefer to have multiple or to buy some for some other people. Um, so are, are these uh, hand stitched, or is it part of a production line? They're now part of a production line. I was hand stitching them at first. So looking at your sales projections, um, it looks like the majority of your seniors in November and December, is that because of the holiday season or people giving us gifts? What, what's the thought there? Yeah, the holiday season, people buying them as gifts and just continuing to ramp up production and increase advertising, things of that nature. I'd like to hear more about how you selected the price. Um, so. I was working with some retailers from Charleston and they gave me advice as far as looking at the margins on how much the production costs were and then you know what they would look for to sell them in a store from a wholesaler versus a retailer. Um, so I definitely had some advice from them and then I also looked at how much women pay in general for makeup. You can't really get a tube of mascara even for less than nine or ten dollars. So an eight dollar smudgy that can last you for years. Um, especially also versus the disposable makeup wipes and things like that, which end up being way more expensive in the long run anyways. How have you uh, surveyed the market so far? Um, I surveyed uh, just people that I sold them to in the beginning and got responses that way, and then also through the social media, people have submitted responses and reviews. What, um, I wonder if you have any thoughts on plans for different kinds of designs, if you've thought about um, more customizable designs or, or what you're doing with that. Yeah, I would love to add like customizable printing so that, you know, like I said, if a certain company or team or group wanted a certain design printed or if like one of the social media influencers, if they wanted to have their own smudgy design or something like that. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that I would like to add in the future.